Bedford Row is a project that supports families of prisoners in all sorts of different ways. Like we support families by just offering them refreshments when they're visiting their loved ones in prison. And then beyond that, we have we've quite a wide range of support options available. And one of the unique aspects of our project is that we have family members and ex-prisoners involved at all levels of the organisation, both on the board and its staff team. Um, we have a great kind of a encouragement for volunteers to become involved and then to become involved in as, as change agents in their own communities. To people who come in the door looking for help, um, there are families of prisoners involved, directly involved, and because of that, our feet are kept very firmly on the ground. Um, I suppose the result of, of, of it is a, is a kind of a synergy of, of the direct experience of imprisonment and I suppose the, the boundaries and, and, and the very important boundaries that are needed in this kind of work and I think that's a particular strength that Bedford Row has. Because children are deeply affected when a loved one goes to prison and particularly if they have a strong bond with the loved one who has gone to prison. Um, the relationship is broken, it's torn apart, and they now have to learn a whole new way of relating through brief phone calls and through prison visits that are really focused on containment. And they experience a real emotional pain. There's confusion, they experience stigma. Sometimes they just withdraw, or sometimes they become very aggressive. And I suppose that aggression and anger is very misunderstood. Misunderstood in where it's coming from, a place of pain within themselves. And I work with a little lad and have worked with him for the last couple of years. And in the last couple of months, he said to me, Bernie, I'm okay so long as I can see my dad. And this little boy's dad is in prison and he knows what's right for him to see his dad. And I suppose my role as a social worker and our emphasis here in Bedford Row is to kind of is to be the holding environment for that little boy and all his emotions of pain and loss and to help him to kind of to find meaning in the loss that he's experiencing to help him to still relate to his dad in the loving way that he always has and also to help him to find a future that's about possibility and hope and I think that's where we can break the cycle of imprisonment. If that little boy and people like him can believe there's a future of possibility and hope for them. Because we had another little lad about three years ago and he said, when I grow up, I want to be a mechanic. I want to have a nice house and a happy family. Now he's not looking for the stars. He's looking for goals and dreams that are very attainable, but the odds are stacked against him because of intergenerational imprisonment and because of addiction. And I suppose our role is to build a relationship with him, to believe what he says and to believe that it's possible and that we convey that to him and to his family who are caring for him and to his loved one that's in prison, that all of us can work together to help that little boy be the mechanic, have the nice house and have the happy family. And I find uh, this a very special project here um, because the people who come in the door, they're the priority and we respond to them and where they're at. And uh, I find that very important. But they're never going to tell you the full extent of the story. I even notice that the students are around here, we have great students that come in, mm. as you know. And if the few women are around, they love the women to come in and join mm. for your dinner. Mm. Mm. And it's just shown us that look what we can do. We can cook a dinner, mm. we can clean up after it, we can wash up after it. And it makes them feel great about themselves. Mm. And I think maybe that's the only bit of buzz they get from mm. Monday to Friday every week. Do you know, so I actually feel very sad yeah. at the times of a Friday watching them. Yeah. I think there should be rewards. Little treats. Sounds a bit weird, but if you're doing a good long sentence, definitely. Mm -hmm. And if you're going in now, then your record shows it's because of drug addiction, it's because of alcohol, domestic, for drunk disorderly charges, mm -hmm. or because of alcohol and things like that. Mm -hmm. Those issues need to be looked at.
Mm. I think if it's a short term prisoner, he should be offered rehab. And aftercare. If it's a two year prison mm. sentence, aftercare for so many months, no, rehab for so many months, and then the aftercare afterwards. And that's it. If he doesn't. In order for him to address the addiction problem, yes, that would be the rehab. Because that's why they're going in that yeah. door. To. Mm. So if the judge was to order that, it saves thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. If the person doesn't do this program right, mm. then they go in and do the two years. By mm. all means, just to mm. get their punishment. Mm. But if they're willing to say, okay, all right, all this struggle I'm causing is because of my drug addiction, I will go away and I'll get the help for it, I will follow up on the aftercare program, mm. then he don't go to prison. And he don't get a prison record mm. either.